Hey guys, welcome back to the board meeting. I'm your host Shane. Today we're doing another reviews and ratings episode where I review and rate all the new to me games that I've been playing in the past couple weeks with friends, family, and even solo. And today I've got what seven different games that we're going to be talking about. I'm kind of doing speed reviews here, so try to uh, give a quick overview, give my own personal thoughts, and give a final rating for all seven of these games. As usual, we're starting with my least favorite and going into my favorites. And there is a wide, wide range of games this week for sure. And so let's start at the bottom of the barrel. We are starting with Five Towers. Five Towers is a small little card game where you're building out these towers. There's these different, there's five different colored towers and you're building these towers. All the towers have numbers on them. They're all cards and you have to build the towers from higher numbers to lower numbers. So you have to place, if you put a 12 down, you can put an 11 through a zero down on that particular tower. Now, how you're getting these towers, how are you getting these cards to add to these towers is sort of this auction bidding sort of thing that is happening at the beginning of each you know, round or whatever, where you lay out five of these cards randomly. And starting with whoever the start player is, they say, I can take three of these cards. And the next person, I will take it. If you want the cards, you have to beat the previous bid, basically. So if someone takes two, someone might take three. And then maybe one person takes four. And then you take however many cards that you said you could take and put them into your area. Obviously, you don't want to start your towers at like a very low number because that really limits what you can place from then on. There are a couple cards that let you break the rules. The eights and nines. I believe the eights you can place on any card and the nine any card you can place on a nine. I might have gotten those ones backwards, but you know, there's a couple that have that those special rules. You're basically going to go through the deck twice and then you're going to count your points. How the points work in this is uh, however big your tower is for each of them, you get one point for each card that's in your tower. If you ended your tower with a zero, the tower is times two. If you have, and then you take whatever your highest tower is and get an extra point for each card in that particular tower. Whoever's got the most points wins. This game is going to get a five rating and it's because I think it's a cute game. I like the card. The artwork is nice. The problem with this game is it feels very predetermined. I don't feel like I have to play the game. There's not a lot of decision space in this. And when you're going around auctioning them, you know what this person can take. You know what cards that person can take. I know what cards I can take. And so, like, you you know, you reveal the five cards and you're like, okay, I'm going to be able to take two Billy's going to be able to take three. Sam can only take one. So, you know, you it's almost predetermined. I feel like I don't even have to play the game. It almost plays itself. So that's why it's going to get a five, because I don't think there's a huge amount of decision space in this game. It feels like a predetermined system. I know, I think some people are going to like this. I think it could be a good family game. But as far as a game that I'm going to bring to my game group, not so much for myself. So yes, a five rating for five towers, appropriately. Uh, next, we have Green Team Wins. Green Team Wins is a party game that got a little bit of buzz a couple years ago. Now, in this game, you are basically trying to become beyond the green team. You are going to reveal these questions that have two or three answers on them. And you're going to try to pick the answer that's the most popular answer. And so if you pick the answer, so everybody picks one of the answers, and then everybody at the same time reveals their answer. Now, wh whichever team has the majority, that's the green team, because the green team always wins. And if you were on the green team before, you get two points. If you weren't on the green team before, you flip to the green team and you get one point. If you did not pick the right choice, you flip over to the other side. You're no longer on the green team. And that's pretty much the game. You go until someone gets, I think, believe 20 points, and it's going to get a 6.5 rating. It's a decent game. It's it's you have a good time playing it. It's one of those word games, but I don't think it overcomes any of my the more popular word games that I enjoy personally, like Code Names or So Clover or Just One. But it's a decent little party game. Party game that that pushes you to have conversations about what the cards are, 
and it feels it for that reason it kind of almost feels more like more of an activity than a game uh but it's a decent decent little party game if you're a big party game person this one doesn't hurt to have in your collection going on to the next game the next game is game of throne betwixt i've never played any of the betwixt games before but in this game you are basically trying to win these i believe they are ally cards in the center of the table and you're going to be playing these cards that have numbers on them the cards also have some kind of special ability that you're going to do when you play that card. Now, you are either going to play a card or you're going to kneel, meaning backing out and not playing a card. And you go around until everybody has kneeled. And whoever has the most points on that gets to take that ally. Now, you have to take that ally and put it uh, between you and one of your neighbors, whether it's the person on your left, whether it's the person on your right. And it has that between two cities mechanic where you are trying to balance the two cities between you. And whichever score between your allies is the lowest, that's what your personal score is. So you're really trying to balance the two scores between each other. Uh, this one's going to get a 6.5. I think it's a fun little game. There is an issue, I believe, with the distributing of cards. Because when I was playing, I noticed like, Someone might get distributed a lot of really big cards that are really powerful because you distribute them, them randomly. And if you get just a bunch of like the worst numbered cards that are not as powerful, not as fun, then you're just not going to do as well. So there is a substantial amount of luck in this game, but it is relatively fast. I would definitely play it again if someone asked me, but just sort of an average game for me. So 6.5 for Game of Thrones Betwixt. Next, we have Overboss. A boss monster adventure. Now, in this game, you are grabbing tiles that have monsters on them and placing them into your grid. Now, each of the tiles that you're grabbing has a specific scoring condition. Like, if you're grabbing forests, the more forests you grab, the more points that is going to be worth. And if you're grabbing dungeons, they want different types of tiles beside them. They're going to score more points for that. The monsters that you're grabbing and placing on tiles also are going to score in different ways. You want like your forest monsters to be on the forest tiles. Those are going to get you one extra point. There are some tiles or little monsters that are the, the actual monsters that get you just straight up victory points. There are one, you also want to have a bunch of monsters in rows and columns of the same type. Then you're going to score your little party of those people and score points that way. This one's going to get a 7.5. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I enjoy that, that what you're going to take, what you're drafting and placing it into an area and sort of like that city building aspect to it, where you're trying to build, put it in the perfect position and it's going to get a 7.5, which is a good score. But I'm going to say this reminds me of a game that I like more than this one, Cascadia. This reminds me of Cascadia, of taking a tile that also has a scoring condition, an animal on that one, and placing them on tiles. Why I like Cascadia a little bit more? Because it's a little bit more free form. It's not so restrictive. Where this one you have to place in a grid, where Cascadia you can build just in a huge area over here. You can build whatever you, however you want to. So Cascadia feels a little bit more free form a little bit more of an open world compared to this one. I enjoy this one, but it's probably not going to stick in my collection just because of Cascadia. But I'm sure a lot of people are really going to like Overboss, a boss monster adventure. Going to our next one, we're going to a small little card game. This is Far Away. This is a very quirky, weird game, especially to explain the first time you play this game. So uh, you are going to be basically taking cards and placing them in a row. You're only going to be placing eight cards. Now, the cards have a bunch of different num uh, information on them. We're going, they're going to have symbols. They're going to have scoring conditions. They're going to have symbols that you need to uh, activate that scoring condition. There's going to be numbers. So if you lay the lowest number, you get to draft the next uh, tile or card into your hand first. If you play a higher card than your previous card, you get to take these, um, I can't remember what they are, but they're little other extra cards that are going to get you more resources. They're going to get you more scoring conditions. They're going to just, they're just good cards to have. So at the end, you're going to be placing these eight cards in a row. 
After you've draft or placed all eight of these cards in a row, you're going to flip them all face down. And then starting on the right side, you're going to be flipping them over. And you're going to be scoring those cards from right to left. But you don't get the resources that are not flipped over yet. So you might have a couple resources that you need to activate that scoring condition, but you haven't flipped those cards over yet, so you don't have those resources to score that card. So, well, you didn't plan correctly on that, so you go to the next one, you know, and you flip over that one. Did, did you meet the criteria for that scoring condition? It's a very weird game to think about, to wrap your head around. It's very quirky. It's not a difficult game but it's just quirky in the nature of the mechanics of how they do everything. Because you're placing cards left to right, but then you flip them all over, and then you're scoring right to left. But you're not going to score for this. You don't have these resources yet until you flip over those cards. So it might take a game or two to wrap your head around it. It's going to get an 8 rating. I think this game is extremely clever. How they did this game mechanically. It has... Very, it's so thinky when you're playing this. And you're like, I'm going to play this because this card um, that I played earlier is going to be this. And you're like, oh, wait, that I won't have those resources yet when I reveal that. So you have to work in reverse. And it's such a weird mechanic, but it's really thinky. It's really fun. It's a small little card game. Pretty easy to explain. It's just weird to wrap your head around the game. So an 8 rating for Far Away. Next, we have Disney Lorcana Illumineer's Quest Deep Trouble, with, which is a new set in the Disney Lorcana world, but it's not just a new set of new cards. This is a new game mode. This is a co the cooperative game mode that came out for Disney Lorcana. So now you can play a cooperative game with your friends or play a solo game and fight against Ursula. Ursula has her own deck of cards that she is going to be placing out these people, and she is racing to 40 lore, and she plays very, very similar to yourself, and you're playing the game just, it's regular Lorcana. There's not a lot to get into this cooperative mode, and she... The, her deck runs really, really smoothly. It's If you know how to play Lorcana, you're going to get into this mode very easily. I've played this solo. I've played it cooperatively with my girlfriend. I enjoy that I can play it cooperatively with, with my girlfriend. This is going to get an 8 rating. I think it's a very smooth system that they have introduced here. And I would put it akin to something like the new Unmatched Tales to Amaze set, which introduced cooperative mode to Unmatched. That system was very easy to get into. This system is very easy to get into. And why it's getting an 8 rating where I put Unmatched Tales to Amaze a 10. Because there's a whole lot more variability in the Unmatched set compared to this one. This only has the one deck that you're versing. It's only... You, you do have some starter decks that come in with it. But you're versing Ursula, who has one deck of cards, and every time you play her, you're playing against that same deck of cards. There are different difficulty levels, and I would say medium or hard are extremely hard, actually. Especially if you're not messing with those starter decks and make, tweaking them a little bit. But... So this is doesn't have a ton of variability, where Unmatched had two different bosses that you could verse against, and then it had a bunch of different minions that you could place into those, into those games, and that would really switch up the game. This one's going to play relatively same every time you play it. So it's going to get an 8 rating. I really like it. I really like the simplicity of it. I like that I can play it cooperatively with people. That just enhances my experience with this game as a gateway game as something that I can introduce to new players, rather than showing them the world of Magic the Gathering, which is going to be really complex, this is going to be quite a bit simpler to get into. And now that I can play it cooperatively with them, it just, just brings this game up just that much more. So an 8 rating for Illuminator's Quest, Deep Trouble. Now going to our last game that we're going to be talking about, and I actually talked about this in a previous video where I did a solo review of this one, but I've decided to throw this in here in case you didn't watch that. This is the new Unmatched set, speaking of Unmatched, Slings and Arrows. Now, this is a new four-character set that has come out for Unmatched. This is set in Shakespeare's world. You have four characters, you have Shakespeare, you have Titania, you have Hamlet, and you have the Wayward Sisters. I love the setting of this. 
And I love the characters of this. And I won't get too much into the details of these characters, and, but I do, I do really like all four of these characters that came in this set. I, if I was going to pick a favorite character for this set, I don't think I can pick one. And that's not very common when it comes to the unmatched sets that have come out. Usually I have got a favorite, and usually I have a, a least favorite. This one, I don't think I can pick a favorite, and I don't think I can pick a least favorite. Because if you're going to ask me to play any of these characters, I am definitely down for it. I did mention this in the review of this particular set, though, that I am slightly cautious and worried for the future of Unmatched, Unmatched because three of these characters do feel like there's they do something similar to other characters. And if you want to get a little bit more information about my feelings of this game, go check out my review, my individual review of that, instead of this. This is a little, just a little bit more quick overview of it. But yeah, I do really liked it. So it gave, I got it, gave it a 9 rating. It It is a really good set. It has really good characters. I like the setting. I like the quirky world that they've put brought Unmatched to in the Shakespeare world. And I would say it probably is going to compete to be maybe in one of the top five sets that Unmatched has come out with. So I really, really like this set quite substantially. And uh, that is the last game that we are going to be talking about today, so make sure to comment down below, as always, some of your thoughts on some of these games, if you've played them, if you haven't, if you agree with me, or if you don't. Either way, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care.